I've been asked, why do we give priority now to this issue? And the answer is very simple, reality. The reality I've met when I've traveled in the member states has uh, made me convinced that there is a somewhat hidden but real human rights problems here. I met individuals and had discussions with them who have uh, come out, as it's called, and had a number of very difficult problems as a result of them declaring who they are and how they are. They have been discriminated in their workplaces and they have had a number of other problems. I met others who hesitate to come out because they feared the consequences of such a step. We're talking about quite a number of people in this situation. And of course, this is a problem uh, when it comes to the full respect for everyone when it comes to human rights. Another conclusion I've drawn is that we do not have many facts about this human rights problem. And therefore, um, we have in my office been now working for about two years in order to produce uh, this support. We've been helped by consultants. We have been helped with uh, uh, facts, also in cooperation with the Fundamental Rights, rights Agency in Vienna. We've been in touch with ODIR within the OEC uh, structure. We have worked also in contact with the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. We have been in touch with non-governmental organizations in almost all member states, and also with ombudsman offices, equality bodies, and also with the authorities. And the result is what you now have in front of you. Um, of course, I think it's important to uh, also uh, recognize and admit that there is a progress in this field, quite considerable progress uh, as well in many of the member states. It's not really today uh, a situation where people feel, people in authority, people who decide in the parliaments, etc., feel that uh, homosexuality is an illness. That time is past. Also in, in Europe, homosexual context is not criminalized. That's uh, unfortunately not the case all over the world. There are still quite a number of uh, countries where it's a serious crime to have a homosexual relationship. And in some countries, it's even very serious in the sense that there could be a death penalty if someone is discovered as having a homosexual relationship. We are past that stage in Europe. But still, still there are problems. One is that uh, LGBT people, when they organize in organizations, have had difficulties to have their organization registered in the sense being accepted by the authorities as one legitimate organization. We have also had situations where when such organizations and others have wanted to demonstrate their views publicly that such rallies have not been admitted. The applications for that have been rejected. Uh, and we had, unfortunately, such a case uh, recently also again for the sixth time in Moscow. In other cities where there have been rejection, now it is possible to have such demonstrations. And in such cases, there have been, in some instances, problems with protecting the demonstrators against hooligans who have attacked violently uh, such demonstrations. So there are still uh, problems there. We have also uh, problems when it comes to hate crimes because uh, people are victims of hate crime because of their sexual ori orientation and gender identity still in some countries in Europe. And we want this to be seen as a serious crime and when the motive is hatred against this group of people, that that should be reflected in the sentences by the courts as an aggravating circumstance when it comes to this type of crimes. We have a number of reports from countries uh, when it comes to harassment and daily problems in workplaces and schools where people have been discriminated and badly treated just because they are homosexuals or have a gender identity situation. Uh, 
a, a, a special problem where I think the, the lack of knowledge, knowledge uh, understanding is uh, particularly deep relates to transgender people. And there, there is a need in a number of European countries to review their legislation. Uh, first of all, there are problems when it comes to recognition of reassignment of, of gender. There is an interesting discussion going on in Ireland for the moment in a case that has been in those circles quite well known now, Lydia Foy, uh, where uh, she tried to get her uh, uh, gender reassignment recognized by authorities and also have her birth certificate changed. That was uh, problematic, but in the end the court decided they would agree to that, probably under pressure that otherwise the uh, decision would be taken here in Strasbourg in the same direction. But there's still a discussion in Ireland whether that would also be reflected in the legislation so that it would be possible also for others to have their reassignment recognized officially. That, of course, is not only a problem for Ireland, but for, for, uh, for many countries. In some countries, uh, people n are required to go through a, a surgical operation in order to have, which would be, uh, in effect, a sterilization in order to have their uh, new gender recognized. Uh, and in other countries, and some of the same countries, it's also necessary to divorce if one is married in order to uh, be recognized in one's new gender. So there are human rights problems for this, this group of people. And my belief is that this is based on lack of knowledge. People don't understand this, this situation and the problems that uh, these people have. And it's, it's necessary to inform and to be open-minded and also, in these cases, protect basic uh, human rights. Uh, by and large, this is a question of, of attitudes and, uh, and information, in my opinion. And therefore, I hope that the report that we publish now will uh, be studied, uh, not only by non-governmental organizations and ombudsmen and equality bodies, but also by politicians and uh, uh, officials in, in government administrations, and that there will be an enlightened discussion about this, uh, which would uh, eradicate the uh, remaining prejudices uh, and ill treatment that take place against uh, this uh, group of people. It is actually surprising how aggressive, how aggressive the resistance against reforms in this area will be. The uh, attacks against the gay pride demonstrations have been so violent in, in some countries. I followed closely last year in Belgrade, uh, from a distance, I wasn't there, uh, the, the, the clash that came when a great number of uh, hooligans uh, very aggressively attacked the demonstrators. Uh, and courageously, uh, the police defended the demonstrators. And many of the policemen were seriously injured in this, in this uh, clash that, that, that came. And now, when I was in, in, in Belgrade recently, they are discussing the, this year's uh, demonstration. And of course, they are afraid that the, the same thing will happen again. But I must say that the, the behavior of the police in Belgrade was, was a, a fantastic demonstration of principle, and that everyone has human rights, and these human rights must be defended when attacked by people who are aggressive and don't recognize the, these, these rights. And we will have, unfortunately, similar situations probably in some other countries as well in the future. So the time, in my opinion, is really here now to try to have a solid, sober, factually based discussion about these problems to make it possible for everyone in our societies to feel free and also to state their, their situation publicly and not have to hide any longer. So that is the intention behind uh, this report.